I'm here right now. Uh, I guess we can say that. Well, you're one, you're too young. Two, you're too great. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, well look, we're, we're certainly not stopping making videos. Um, but, you know, the thing is, I've been doing the live show for a long time. And, um, <clears throat> you know, three years, every single day, pretty much. And, look, look I love the show. I love doing the show. <clears throat> There's nothing I would rather do than the show. Um, but at some point, you know, the numbers just start bearing out that people want videos more. They don't seem to want the interaction or the or the chat or anything like that. They, it just seems like people want to come in and get the information these days. And, um, you know, I get a lot more likes on my regular videos. So it's, it takes a long time to set up the stream. And, uh, you know, it's one of these things where uh, it's definitely not my preference. Uh, I like engaging with the audience, but it gets seems to get smaller, <laughs> smaller every day. So um you know the the bigger channels are starting to to kind of run away with a lot of the attention right now is looking at crypto banner and uh <clears throat> crypto banner and who was the other channel i was watching uh george uh they're getting way more viewers on their live shows than i am now so um just kind of thing where i'm going to keep making videos and making picks and um you know uh maybe one day if the audience is there for it i'll, I'll bring it back but uh right now that's where we're at <clears throat> man i think I'm going to give you feedback as someone that started, you know, listening to you super early. And again, bro, I can care less about anything in your personal life, anything that people have tried canceling you for, <laughs> any of that nonsense. I feel like you've done so much for this space in general. Thank you. You've onboarded so many people here. You've done way too much to be... You know, worried about any of that stuff. I feel like yeah, during a bull run, it's a different story. Dur during a bull run, your your audience is gonna be there, uh, dude. You're like the the crypto king of Google, <laughs> like, yeah. like a SEO genius. <laughs> well, I Google crypto influencer, crypto advice, and Bitboy comes up. I go on YouTube, Bitboy comes up. <laughs> so uh, I think Ben, I think once you once people really understand that you rebranded, once the market starts doing a little better, bro, I think you'll be on top again. I really yeah. do. Well, I appreciate the kind words, and, um, you know, this, this is my 12th year in crypto now, and, um, you know, it's one of these things where every year is a different animal, and right now, you know, things are very interesting. Uh, the market has kind of died here uh, in the last last week, after we thought it was going to get some breathing room, and it's one of these things where we need a lot of the prices to start breathing for people to start coming back into the space to see those kinds of things, and so right now, I'm just working really hard on, on creating evergreen content, and um, you know what, cause you gotta think about it like this, my entire channel is basically gone. Uh, so all, of course it's still there, but I don't get any credit for it. So all of my coin reviews, uh, everything I've ever talked about as far as altcoins and uh, Ethereum or Cardano or XRP or Solana, it's all gone. So I, ha I have to start fresh with all that stuff. And so really concentrate. I got a lot of, I've got a, a, a series on the Bitcoin cycles that's going to be coming out really soon. There's a killer killer series and then we're going to be looking at uh sorry i may sound winded i've been at the gym for like four hours now uh you guys know i'm training for this fight so uh i've been at i i went and i did uh i worked out and then i went and i did my boxing stuff and then I did my training stuff and then i've been running at the gym and doing jump rope and all kinds of stuff so um uh, not 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 uh the freshest right now so my voice is a little a little raspy here but <clears throat> Bro, don't even worry about that, man. We're yeah. happy to have you here. Are Appreciate you going to win this fight or what? Are you going to win? That's what I want to know. Well, unless this guy, they've got me fighting as an absolute ninja. Uh, yeah, there's no way I'm going to lose. Um, beat his ass, yeah, of man. Beat his well, ass. it's not just him. I, I'm going to beat his ass on behalf of all of the people on Twitter that I hate. Uh, so y'all all, all uh, get represented by this guy with a mustache. I'm going to knock his mustache off. Who is this guy? I, and where did he come from? Uh, I don't know, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, you know what's so funny is <clears throat> all these people talk all this shit to me nonstop, uh, and they have to beg to try to get somebody to fight me. <laughs> you would think with all the people out there uh, talk so much smack about me, there's a, a, a line a million miles long, uh, but no, uh, I was going to fight Patty Stash. Uh, I like Patty. Patty's a good guy, actually. And uh, he had to he had to pull out for some uh, blood blood reasons. He had cancer at some point, and um, you know I think he went in for some tests, and everything's fine with his cancer. It's not back or anything, uh, but there was something about a test. I think this is what I heard something about a test. He couldn't fight, so they fight got this other guy. He's the founder of uh, uh, Sonic Obama uh, Trump Dog Coin in you or something. I don't know what it is. 
uh, but he's some founder of some coin. I have a picture with him, so I guess he's a fan. Uh, probably not going to be a fan after I knock his mustache off, but. Dude, I can't wait for this. Is this the same uh, boxing event that they did like a month or two ago? <clears throat> like it was a big one and a bunch of people from crypto Twitter were attending or is this a different? Well, was that was, was an actual fight? You're talking about the fight? Like, like but so, so here's what happened before. So we had a fight um, to go to. There's a karate combat fight. Uh, our IFC fight is karate combat as well. But this is like a, a, a non-amateur. It was professionals. And they had us go out there to do an event and they were announcing the fights and they did the blockchain influencer awards and all this stuff. And then of course you guys know me and George had a thing. Uh, some people know, I guess, remember, uh, me and George got in a thing. I got in a big argument with him and we ended up, uh, I ended up not actually going to the fight that night. Um, but everything's fine now. So I'm, lo I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, at the end of the day, I just found out I got a new opponent like a week and a half ago and I've been training for a guy that's six, two, and now I'm training for a guy that's five, seven. And it's like, at this point, I don't even care. Just put anybody in front of me. I just go fight. I've been training hard, and I've been working my ass off. Um, I'm down, like, another, you know, 15 pounds, and I'm, 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 I'm ready. Uh, I, I've always wanted to fight. Uh, now, I've been in a lot of fights in my life, but I've always wanted to fight in a ring. So, super excited to uh, finally get out here and do it. It's a bucket list thing, and if it goes well, uh, you know, I guess I'll be the champ. I guess uh, I have to go for number two. Man, I feel like last time we spoke on spaces, bro, there was so much going on, yeah. so much you were working on as far as the government goes uh -huh. and putting a bill through yeah. and things of that nature. Now it's like, damn, yo, we got this one guy that's actually speaking up for us and trying to put shit together. And again, man, I think, uh, I think you're a lot more of an asset than you even think you well, are. I appreciate so. that. Yeah, I really, I really do, bro. I really do. I think market conditions are fucked up, and you have to start fresh. So, yeah, you know, building back up is is difficult. Well, we've got we have a lot going on right now too. I mean, we have um, we we're supposed to have tomorrow was going to be an emergency hearing. Uh, basically, what we're trying to do is we finally have refiled our Rico racketeering lawsuit against T.J. Shedd, Justin Williams, Nick Demondi, Allison Five Ash, and Carlos Diaz. And we, we have filed the amended lawsuit, and now we're having an emergency hearing. Uh, if we are victorious in this emergency hearing, uh, there will be a receiver put in place at Hit Network, which means that TJ and, the, and his dad lose the finances of the company, and a third party comes in and manages the business. Uh, and I get say so. <laughs> so um, that's what we're trying to do, and hopefully, you know, if that happens, uh, within a week, uh, we will have power back in that building. So, um, we've got that going on. Plus, uh, a lot of guys, a lot of you guys know, um, uh, if you've watched the show, uh, Cassie is obviously my girlfriend. Uh, everybody knows Cassie. She was in the truck. Uh, Cassie's father passed away unexpectedly. So, um, we're going to be going, uh, this weekend and, uh, next week we're going to be gone out of town doing that. So we're going to take a break from everything pretty much. I'm going to have some phone record videos for people while I'm gone, but, uh, we're going to be doing that and, and, and kind of taking it easy and, and see what's going on. Um, but it's, it's one of these things where, you know, life just keeps hitting us left and right nonstop. And uh, I don't know. I think I'm getting Cassie's name tattooed on me this week. We'll see. <laughs> just despite everybody. Listen, I, I don't I don't want to ask you where. <laughs> I don't want to ask you where. But, In the truck. Uh, man, I, I'm sorry for, for Cassie's you. loss, your loss, man. Yeah. I, I really hope that a bunch of blessings do come your way after, Thank bro. You. I, I've been through hell and back and myself yeah. in life. It's, and I know you've been through some shit. I know you've been through some shit. So, man, I, I really hope that you get all that together, I man. I appreciate it. I, I've definitely been through some stuff, but uh, this is definitely uh, 10 times worse than anything I've ever been through by, you know, a zillion miles. But, you know, we're, we're still holding on and, and fighting. And, um, you know, at the end of the day... At the end of the day, um, you know, I know I've got a lot of stuff going on in my personal life and a lot of people, you know, everybody kind of knows what happened at this point. And, um, look, I, I certainly wish I wouldn't have had an affair. Uh, I wish I would have just been more direct with my wife and, um, you know, that wasn't happy. And, uh, the thing is though, is through all this, as bad as everything has been, um, as horrible as I've lost everything, um, I got Cassie and I love her more than anything in the entire universe. And, uh, you know, we're really excited to start our life together after my divorce is over, we're getting married and, um, you know, moving forward and, uh, you know, super excited about life. Once, once my divorce is over and once 
some of this business stuff is over, you know, it's going to feel so great. Uh, we're going to have a lot of, um, you know, a lot of uh, stuff off our back and it, we just talk about every night, you know, we're just like, it would be so nice to just live regular life, you know? And I don't mean not being an influencer. I just mean not having to deal with lawsuits and, you know, people stabbing you in the back and all this stuff 24 uh, seven, maybe just 24 five, uh, give me a break on the weekends. Man, even the personal stuff, bro, the thing that that, I, that really disgusts me about this space is the majority of these people coming at you, coming at other people in the past, when it comes to the personal stuff, is they've got their own problems oh, yeah. at home. Mm. Everyone does. Everyone yeah. does. And, you know, it, it just really sucks. The cancel culture army that is spread throughout this space, man. I remember years back. It wasn't this way. It really wasn't. Yeah. It was the opposite of cancel culture. And then I look back at like the 2020 elections and the amount of people that got onboarded in this yeah. space that were talking about voting for Biden and all <laughs> kinds of crazy shit, man. It, it got so gross. It got. It really got gross, man. Yeah. I, I really wish that you could, you know, deal with your stuff in peace. I hate. I hate how it is in this space. Sometimes I really do, man. I really do. Well, I know we've been. Uh, yeah. Well, no, no, nobody knows more about the toxicity of this space than I do. Um, I mean, right now, this is a great example. Um, look, uh, and I know it, people, everybody who brings up anything they think I've ever done, it's all from that Zach XBT post, and it's all from four years ago. Um, you look at what's going on with Rand from Crypto Banner right now uh, and Miles, and you see uh, that, look, I can tell you 100%. Uh, they both had allocations in, in both of those uh, projects they shilled, Satoshi VM and uh, Ape Terminal. Uh, i got a really interesting story about the Ape Terminal guy. But um, it, this thing where influencers get allocations to shill projects, it's got to fucking end. It's got to stop. Um, it's disgusting. It's quid pro quo. And every single influencer that's involved in it says they don't do it. And every single one does it. Uh, I don't get allocations for projects anymore. Um, actually, I have not been asked to invest in a project. Um, I can't even remember the last time. And the reason is, because this is how you know that Rand is lying. Rand said, we, we don't, uh, you know, this guy, he's got, um, uh, I call him wrist arms. He's got wrist arms because his entire arm is the size of his wrist. And he says, he says, oh, you know, we don't shill. We don't show projects uh, that we invest in, uh, but there's hours of footage of him showing these projects. And I know for a fact that Rand definitely agrees to show these projects because I tell them I won't show them. Uh, when people come to me, which like I said, they don't do it anymore. When they come to me and they say, hey, we want you to do this pre private sale. I say, okay, no quid pro quo. I will not talk about the project unless it does really well and I like it and it's worth talking about. And also, yeah, sure, I'm invested in it. But they say all of these influencers like RAN, uh, and there's a million more of them. I, RAN is the ringleader. RAN is the top of the, RAN is the very top of the crypto influencer pump and dump cabal. Uh, Kyle Chasse is right behind him. Uh, those two guys are pure trash, pure garbage. Um, I, hear, I hear a lot of stuff about what Kyle's over there doing in Thailand. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of kids over there. Um, but the fact is these people are monsters and they don't give a fuck about you. Uh, they're going to pretend to their audience that they love their audience and they're just giving you good advice on these cool new trending projects. These are never cool new trending projects. They're always projects they got allocations in and they're waiting to dump their tokens on you the moment that they can. And Rand has been doing this nonstop since 2020 and nobody calls him out. And finally, this guy Stan Crypto is amazing. Uh, he came out. And he's been calling out all of these people that have been doing this. And what's so amazing to me is as much grief as I get from everybody about everything. Uh, it's amazing. I, I think people know I'm not in this pump and dump circle. Uh, and, and it's one of these things where it's, it's got to get cut out of the space. It's absolutely disgusting. And it, you look at the way that these influencers um, uh, use the, these projects, the, these Satoshi V.
him and all this stuff. It's it's got to stop, and that's the problem with our industry, and that's the problem why everything is so um, toxic. Because you got people like Rand who come out and say, "Oh, you know, we don't show project." They they fired Miles over it. Miles took the entire brunt of this, where Miles showed the same thing that the Rand was showing. And guess what? He got out scot free. Rand got out scot free, uh, and Miles gets fired. Uh, I wish Miles would have the balls to come and say what actually happened. Uh, but but it's always quid pro quo with these guys, and it, this space is not going to mature until we remove this type of stuff. Because these are the things: the Satoshi VM and the Ape Terminal are the exact thing. that cause people to come in and lose money and leave the space forever. And this stuff's just not necessary. These are literally garbage projects that do literally nothing. And influencers are telling you that they're great. It's stupid. Um, if somebody wants to go find a great project, you should go to Token Metrics or CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap and you should, or DeFi Llama, and you should spend time researching projects and find them Instead of someone come to you and say, this is a great project, you should put money in it and you'll make a lot and then go tell your audience. Um, so to me, that's, that's one of these things that I, I believe um, we have to change. I don't know why I got into all that. I can't remember why, what, why I brought that up. Uh, but there you go. I am, Rand, Rand is a piece of garbage um, and that's all um, coming out right now. So it's very popular. Um, and, and I think that, well, I was just saying, I remember what I was saying. I was just saying that like people have to realize that a lot of these people in this space that people think are bad or good, you know, I say this every time I'm on any show in this space, the heroes are the villains and the villains are the heroes. Um, you find out later that all the people like Sam Bankman Freed, these thought we're doing all these great stuff. We're doing stuff behind your back and all the people that get targeted and said they're horrible people all the time, like me and Richard Hart, uh, we're actually not bad people. Yo, it's jealousy, dude. I, I get, firsthand, I got to, to watch it go down with you. I watched it go down with so many. It, it's yeah. jealousy. I, I got a little bit of clout. A little bit of clout compared to you. Bark here, the co-host. A little bit of clout compared to you. And it's jealousy. It's like, uh, how do I even explain this? It's some people are allowed to do it. Some people yeah. are not allowed to do right. it. That's what drives me crazy. It's the unfairness across the board. Mm -hmm. And it... <sighs> People were looking for any reason to cancel you, bro. Yep. They were well, sitting there waiting for you to slip in any way. Here, here's, here's why I'm not allowed to do it. Uh, I'm not allowed to do it because I'm the equivalent of mainstream pop music and crypto. Um, I am the gateway that people come in through uh, to crypto. I have been for years. And the same people that listen to music and you say, hey, what is that? And they say, oh, this is such and such. They say, oh, I haven't heard them. They say, they're not on the radio. I don't listen to mainstream music. Uh, the, and that's a lot of people on Twitter because of the age demographic. There's a lot of people on Twitter that think they're cooler than everybody else. And a lot of that has to do with ages. I, I think that's something that people don't really think about a lot, which is that literally uh, most of the time, I believe when you're arguing with someone, you're probably arguing with someone that's either probably 20 years older than you or 20 years younger than you. Um, you know, and you have no idea because of all these anon people on Twitter, but the, you know, the jealousy thing is really interesting because, uh, let me, I want you guys to think about this question. Okay. How many times have you ever heard anyone called out for saying something to someone because they're jealous and that person saying, you're right. <laughs> literally never happened in the history of the world no one who is jealous ever admits that they're jealous and that's why you have all of these jealous people on twitter like oh you know bark stocks are you jealous no 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 i just hate him 
No, it's obviously jealousy. No, if you ever thought about that, no one's ever admitted to being jealous on the internet. Uh, it's it's like it's only a one way claim. You can only claim it to somebody else. Uh, they'll never take responsibility for. It. We've seen it happen so many times, dude. Yeah. There, there was a uh, the other day we were having like some some disagreement with someone over over Doge and the yeah. the Doge people that call themselves Doge Doge OGs in this space are annoyed that their network is bogged, but people are being onboarded and you know, the network's being used and they don't like it. And I guess Bark got into a, uh, an argument in a way, disagreement with somebody over that. And yeah. the second that Bark won that argument, it was, oh, I see you all over my timeline. You know, you look like a douchebag. You talk yeah, like yeah, a douchebag. Yeah. It's just the personal yeah. attacks come out and it's, it's pure jealousy, man. It, it, it really is. is. And, with you, bro, I think a, a lot of these people kind of saw you as a threat, and it's like, oh, if we yeah. get rid of this guy, we could take his audience. For yeah. some reason, a lot of people in this space think that that's the way to grow an audience, by taking somebody else's. It's sad, it's bro. Sad. It really is. Well, You I put think, in all that work, man. Yeah. You put in all that work to build. Oh, well, we're talking about the people that actually stole my business from me. Uh, yeah, that, those people for sure. Um, they're pieces of shit. Uh, and they, you know, TJ... DJ was stealing real estate from me from day one. Uh, so we now have figured out the scheme completely. Like, I want you guys to understand this. Day one, when TJ became my business partner, uh, he structured the real estate and, the bi- and, and other aspects of the business. He structured our real estate different than all the rest of the LLCs without me knowing. Um, and so on that one, uh, basically what happened is, is he said, hey, uh, on this one, uh, it's owned by all of our companies, uh, but it wasn't. He lied about that. It w- it's actually a separate company where him and I were both uh, individual owners of it. And the long and the short of it is, uh, without getting into the details, because I can't get into the details for court, um, from the day one, I made TJ a millionaire overnight when I brought him on as my business partner. And day one, when he signed the paperwork, he was trying to steal from me. <laughs> you, you, you cannot make that up literally made him a millionaire overnight with a signature and that same day he tried to start stealing real estate from me dude that's yeah, that's freaking insane that yeah. i don't the thing that i don't get about that whole situation is again like the show's called bitboy crypto right. I, I was tuning in to listen to bitboy crypto so uh, yeah. <laughs> i don't want to tune in anymore because it's not bitboy anymore so it gets a little weird and i, I want to say most people feel the same way that we're tuning yeah. in to listen to bitboy i don't think they were tuning in to listen to anyone else otherwise no. it wouldn't have been called bitboy so that kind of doesn't make sense to me and uh, i do feel like in general man a lot of people don't really the, the people that are on YouTube, the people that are on TikTok listening to you are not the people on Twitter that are saying the most. So I don't yeah. think a lot of a lot of these people know what's going on or what had happened. So they don't really know where to tune in now. And again, man, once yeah. the market starts getting better, I really think you're going to take over again. I really well, do. Well, I, 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 I believe I'm going to get the channel back. Uh, I believe I will have BitBoy Crypto back at some point um, in the next few months, uh, maybe sooner rather than later. I'm never, like, people need to understand this. I'm never going to give up until I get it back, so I'm getting it back. Um, there's, I want people to understand this. There's 0% chance that TJ is going to get away with this. Literally zero. Um, so it's just a matter of time and waiting for the timing uh, for, you know, like, we're supposed to have this hearing tomorrow, and the judge got sick. Uh, so now our hearing got moved until next week, um, which is unfortunate for them. <laughs> it's like... Uh, because they have discovery that's due to us. Uh, now we're going to have all of the discovery before the hearing. Uh, so everything for them is lying up bad right now, which is awesome. But, um, you know, the thing is, is it, like TJ is a really great example of everything that's wrong, not in crypto, it's wrong in the world. Uh, this guy comes in and sees someone that's super successful and he knows that he doesn't have any talent. But, because he tried, he tried to do YouTube before. He, that's what he was doing when I met him. He's just not very good at it uh, because he's a psychopath. He's a sociopath and he's not likable. And when he tries to come across as likable, it's 10 times more cringe. And the fact is, is he knew that he had no talent. And when he got into the building and he had this idea for Hidden Network, well, I came up with Hidden Network, but the idea for the shows that were on it, uh, they all failed. They all failed tremendously. 
Um, and uh, nothing he ever came up with produced his money. Um, and so what happens is, is I only get bigger. He comes in as my business partner and now starts seeing himself as kind of an equal to me. Uh, 33 to 67% is what it was. I mean, seriously, himself is an equal to me, but he can't compare as an equal to me on the channel. And then when we got the state deal, when we got the million dollar a month state deal, um, it, TJ probably wanted to kill himself, to be honest with you, because that was the confirmation that I just brought in $15 million to the business in one contract. And TJ won't bring $15 million to that business in 25 years or more. Um, so it was almost like when we got that state deal and Cassie was the driving force of that. When, when we got the state deal, it was like, they resented it. <laughs> the people in the building, they were already going to overthrow me. Uh, they were already planning this for a long time. They're planning this. They were actively planning the overthrow since June of 2022. Uh, that was the active plan. Uh, of course, TJ was always going to overthrow me. Um, but they had been planning this forever. It's not like just all of a sudden this happened. And so what happens is TJ creates his own real estate company in January of 2022 and starts f funneling uh, all of my real estate, our real estate, into his own company. Um, and, so, and so what happens is, um, is that um, as, he's, as he's funneling this, I get the state deal and they were, they were probably, probably going to throw me out by, by April, probably by April. But I got the state contract. And once we got the state contract, it was too much money for them to, um, it was too much money for them to, uh, you know, overthrow me at that point. So they had to figure out a way to have me get the deal and then overthrow me and talk stake into keeping a sponsorship with a channel that has no talent. Uh, that was literally their plan. These people are so unbelievably stupid. Uh, but TJ also, TJ has also already stolen $5 million worth of real estate. So he's already stolen it. So he actually doesn't care if the business goes under. If the business goes under, he still thinks he has that real estate. Uh, so he's okay letting everything go to zero and firing everybody over time. So, um, but it, it, it's like he always knew that he had no talent and he always had to put hooks in everybody. That's hit network. The entire thing is built for TJ to get his hooks in people. TJ has his hooks in Joshua Jake now. Uh, TJ always wanted influencers to come work for free. He wanted them to come work for free for exposure, uh, which is hilarious now because there's no exposure on the channel. Um, but it's like, how could you be a content creator and see that this man overthrew the biggest channel in crypto and you want to go work for him? How does that make any sense? Uh, Joshua Jake got the biggest idiot in the history of mankind uh, for going and doing it. Um, I don't know. I think he's trying to have TJ's baby. Uh, I think they're probably sucking each other's dicks, to be honest with you. But do you feel like these people have any pull? Like, uh, one thing I noticed, like today, for example, I didn't even want to talk about this stuff, but maybe like 45 minutes before the space started, there was a yeah. hundred articles put out that you're retiring and all this crazy shit is going on and someone brought it to my attention and I'm just like, what the fuck? It's like people, <laughs> yo, they sit there and follow and watch your every single move yeah, and wait for anything. Is it because of the, the hit network people? Like who, who is it that like has this hard on for you that has all these media companies following you around? Uh... Everybody, <laughs> I've I've got like the most one of the most famous names in crypto. Uh, I definitely have about the most controversial. Uh, so all people have to do is just throw my name out there, and they get clicks. Uh, and that goes for news articles. It goes for YouTubers. Uh, it goes for tweets. Uh, it goes for TikTok. It goes for everything. Um, I, I'm not sure how much you've experienced this. Um, I, I'm I'm very confident I've probably experienced this on a on a different level than most people. Um, but when you are scrolling on TikTok. And you're not, you're not even following crypto people. You're just scrolling through TikTok. Uh, and within a 10 minute period, you find five videos about you. Uh, that's, that's a weird, a weird thing to go over. I'm just trying to watch TikTok guys. I'm not trying to watch myself. Uh, and here we go. We got people talking about me nonstop. So, um, I do <laughs> look, uh, I, it is amazing. I knew, uh, as soon as I, uh, announced that on the show yesterday, the news would pick it up. Uh, it's funny because uh, CoinDesk and Cointelegraph every single year for my entire career have left me off. <laughs> I want you guys to think about this. For my entire career, uh, from 2017 on, 
um, in, in the world of crypto influencing, I guess you could say, uh, Cointelegraph nor Coindesk have ever included me in one of their top 100 most important people in crypto. Uh, never, not, not top 100, not one time, uh, not, not uh, in the last seven years. Uh, so we're talking 700 possible people, uh, and I'm not important at all. Uh, but yet, as soon as I say I'm retiring, there they are joining on the spot writing articles about me. Uh, and it, it's funny how, uh, because I trash Coindesk, I trash Cointelegraph all the freaking time. That's why they don't include me. Uh, I call it Cointelegraph, Cointelli, of course. Um, and it's just like, even the news, even the crypto news organizations are freaking biased against me. It's hilarious. One thing I noticed is that, like, if you're super critical, not not even controversial, super critical in this space, they, they, they want nothing to do with you. You yeah. could be the top influencer, the, the top name in, in crypto even. And if you're critical, they want nothing to do with you. None of these news agencies, even, even money. Like a lot of these influencers that are sitting there criticizing you for making money and other influencers for making money and, and are making money themselves, but uh, undisclosed, they hide it really well. Yeah. yeah. They... Dude, they're like again. All these news agencies are writing about them, and the thing the thing is, is they're not critical about anything. They sit there and pretend they're bullish on everything. They sit there yeah. with this whole wag me culture. We're all yeah. gonna make it. We're all gonna win, and they end up really the ones that are winning. The ones that are dumping tokens on your head that yeah. they got for free every day. Like these people yeah. are making money every freaking day. But it's a problem when BitBoy does it. No, nah, that's. That's again. Yeah. That's what drives. Well, but, 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 but Bitboy doesn't even do it, though. That's the thing. Bitboy doesn't even do it. Bitboy hasn't done anything like that in years and years and years. Um, and even when I did do disclo uh, sponsored videos, they were always disclosed. The only video in the history of my channel that ever had an undisclosed video, guess who it was? It was Justin Williams and DZ doing a video on my channel. Um, big shocker there. Uh, so the, the, I have never done what these people are doing now. Did I get private sale allocations back in 2021? Yeah, we had several of them. And every time I brought one up, did I say I invested in it? Yes. Yes, I did. Uh, did I know, uh, my first go round of getting private sale allocations that almost all of these coins would be trash? No, I didn't know that. Uh, some of them did pretty well. Uh, I think we were invested in, um, God, I'm trying to think of some of the ones that did well. Uh, none of them are coming to my brain right now. Uh, we certainly did have several that did uh, really, really, really well um, back in 2021. But a lot of them obviously did terrible because you have to. You guys have to keep this in mind. And I know that you guys know this, uh, but a lot of the audience, the, you know, you they don't have any sympathy for influencers learning the ropes. And getting used to the fact that we're trying to get, we're trying to be manipulated all the time. Because when you first start getting in this industry and you start realizing the big money that's available, well, everybody else that's pumping the coins, the, the projects, the marketing companies, well, they already know how to do this. And you're suddenly now a decent sized influencer or maybe a mid sized or large sized influencer. And now you've got all these people coming to you with all these deals and all these things. And you've been seeing all the other influencers doing this for a while. And you're like, this is the model. This is how we're supposed to do this. How we're supposed to monetize uh, what we do. Um, and there's a lot of ways to monetize. And the, literally every single way to monetize, there are going to be people that are going to criticize it. You turn on your Google ads. Some people criticize it. You sell merch. Oh, it's crappy merch. M cash crap. Uh, you do affiliate links. Oh, you're just milking your audience. Uh, sponsored videos. I, I, I don't believe any influencer should be doing sponsored videos for projects, but that's, that's my own personal preference. Um, and, and so, uh, the thing is you got all these different ways for these people to make money. Uh, of course you have the dark route. You do have the undisclosed promotion route, uh, that a lot of people are going to try to get you to do now. Now I, I have zero sympathy for anyone that does undisclosed promotions. Um, I want to be very clear about that. There is definitely a distinction between people who, uh, look, you're not getting manipulated by, so I was manipulated by some projects back in 2020. I was shown things of a great example of this is, is PAMP. PAMP is the project I got crucified over. The only real loss I've ever taken in my career is that stupid fucking Atosi video. And I tried to sue him and I got in hot water over that thing because uh, my lawyer wrote a crappy, uh, crap, crappy pleading. Um, but the point is, is that uh, I just, I, I don't take um, a lot of losses. That Atosi one uh, was really bad. Uh, somebody remind me. 
uh, undisclosed promo and the Tozy video. You're, you're, you're getting the ropes of this and you're learning how to monetize and how to do it the right way. You may make a mistake. Uh, PAMP showed us and my team a smart contract that was audited by CERTIC. As soon as the video came out, they changed the smart contract uh, so they could dump and so they could rug pull, basically, is what happened. Uh, I didn't know that. Uh, certainly, I didn't think they were going to do that. I had conversations with them. Uh, and I was absolutely manipulated. If I had done that same thing, but instead of saying the video was sponsored, uh, which that's actually why I was suing Atozi, was because in the video, it literally says it's sponsored, and he claims on his video about my video that it didn't say it was sponsored. It literally in the video says it's sponsored. Uh, and so if I had hidden that and not said that it was sponsored, uh, well, now I'm manipulating too. Uh, it, it, there's no longer anything that's excusable. I made a conscious and willful decision to do something wrong. Um, and because of that, uh, that's, that doesn't fit into that category. Uh, but you have a lot of influencers who are, are new and are, their channels are going to start blowing up and they're going to have everybody in the world in their ear trying to get them to do stuff. And it's hard to figure out. There's no book. There's no manual to this stuff. Um, that's why I am so passionate about protecting influencers, um, and, and getting rid of the bad ones. I'm very passionate about it. And I know a lot of people think that's ironic, which is hilarious. Uh, but anyways, I digress. Uh, let me explain, let me clarify for the audience real fast. Guys, during 2020 and 2021, especially DeFi summer, the, the um, auditing company he mentioned, Certic, was really, really big. It was, a, it was the most famous one, in my opinion. Yeah. And there was like this Certic hustle going on where someone had an insider that could get them bumped up yep. for a Certic audit and your project's name would get listed on their website as in progress and that would pump up the price. It would get people to trust into the token and put money into the token. And while while it's being audited, guys, they change the contract. Right. Even after... After it gets a good audit, they change the contract, yeah. and no one is smart enough to see that. So it's something that happens, guys, and they really tried to crucify Ben over that. And yeah. again, and just another stupid, sad incident where they're just sitting there waiting for Ben to slip up in any way where they could try to cancel him and steal his audience. And I watch it happen every single day. We talk about it on this space, Ben, every yeah. day. The amount on, on the NFT side of crypto, uh, crypto Twitter, the amount of undisclosed promo and manipulation that happens from people it's that it. are looked at as leaders yeah. is disgusting, yeah. man. It it's is. disgusting. And they make us out to be the villains. It's so true, man. It's, it's gross. Well, you know, the thing about it is, 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 is what I've really learned, like something I have learned so hard over this entire incident, um, is that you, you don't know who people are. Uh, I thought I knew who the people around me were. I thought I knew their motivations, and, and I didn't. Uh, I was actually extremely wrong and extremely stupid, and I let these people have everything uh, because I trusted them. And, and what I learned is, I mean, this may sound really silly to people, uh, but I learned you can't trust people at face value. Um, you have to actually, when someone does something that's questionable, you need to not ever take that and say, oh, I'm going to write that off. You need to amplify that by 10. Whatever they did that you're like, ah, you know, that, let me give you a great, a great for instance here <clears throat> is back in 2020, uh, Justin Williams, uh, there was a time where he was making my thumbnails. And so when I, he was making my thumbnails, he had access to know every coin I was going to talk about because all the coins were on the thumbnails. And so he was using those to pump and dump on my videos. And so, so what happened is, is that we had hired another guy to come in and be our official graphic designer. Justin Williams was still in, living in Florida. He wasn't working for me full time. And, you know, one day I'm sitting there and I'm watching and I'm like, what is this channel here? Uh, this is an interesting channel. It looks just like mine. Uh, it has same background. It has the same Bitcoin pillow. It's got the same setup. Uh, it's got a little shelf in the background. It uses a similar thumbnail. Uh, he's got a little neon light in the back like I had. He's talking about similar things. And it, it dawned on me, fuck, this is Justin Williams. Sure enough, Justin Williams, who was working at a rehab at the time, had hired one of the, the people that was in the rehab to do a YouTube channel exactly like mine to try to beat me. And to, because 
Justin Williams no longer was getting access to the thumbnails to pump and dump. That's how desperate he is to pump and dump. And that's how these people are is, is that the moment that he was not getting inside information, he created inside information to pump and dump with. Um, and when I found that out, like, like I'm just not, I don't know. I just ignore everything, I guess, which is so funny. Cause I'm known as so, so over the top and like out there and you know, whatever, but yet this was happening right under my nose. I didn't see any of it. Um, Justin will, I, I did not want to tell TJ that I had caught Justin Williams. Cause Justin Williams was one of my best friends. Uh, Justin Williams and I went to rehab together in 2007 and 2008. We've been friends ever since until now, obviously, uh, actually I rephrase that. Uh, he was always my friend. I guess I was never actually his friend. He was always, you know, trying to stab me in the back, but he starts his other channel and I call him out on it and he admits it. And he's like, Oh, blah, 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 blah. Whatever reason he gave, it was bullshit. Uh, and then TJ, I didn't want to tell TJ about it because I felt like, Oh God, Justin is my friend. Uh, and I want him to work here with me. If I tell TJ, uh, now I did eventually tell TJ, by the way, I didn't keep it forever from him. Ben, you're rugging. We can't hear you. It's not just me, right, guys? Give me a thumbs up if you no, can. No, hear no, me. it's not just you. There he is. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, back. I'm back. You can hear me. Yeah, okay, we can sorry. hear you now. It was a phone call coming in. So, anyways, um, point being, if I would have amplified that red flag instead of instead of uh, you know ignoring it. I probably wouldn't be in the situation today. And I, I had a hundred red flags with TJ. Uh, when you see red flags, you need to get people out of your life for sure. Especially when you're in business. You know, when you're like, when, when you're a good person and it, it's really hard to see the bad in people. Yep. And I never see, I'm, the, I'm I feel like I'm good at reading people, especially through the internet, through yep. voices without seeing a face, but I don't want to be that person that is constantly looking to find something especially against people that i'm working with yeah. so i can be you know, taken as as naive and stupid at times and taken advantage of in this space in general which which really sucks man it really does and then and then you get you know villainized and all this nonsense it just it sucks it chaps my ass man it chaps yeah. my ass man you try to be this this good person to everyone else and they end up screwing you over sometimes you know you just got to learn the hard way i guess take life lessons and move on yeah it, it, you don't want to look like someone that's you know, tried to work with everybody at that point you're the problem not everybody else yeah. but well it, it's difficult dude yeah yeah it is and and i think that the for me the silver lining here is very clear. Uh, the silver lining is I have now separated from these evil people and they'll, they'll never get in my life again. Um, so after I get everything back and these people get left with nothing, cause they will get left with nothing. They're probably going to prison. Some of them, um, you know, I, I, I no longer like, for instance, the day, the day I get my account back, the day I get BitBoy crypto back, I get my stake deal back. Uh, but now instead of having 60, 60 crash employees, I've got eight really good ones. Um, so uh, I'm going to actually be able <laughs> to keep all the value that I create instead of TJ and Justin stealing it all. So that stake deal got halted? Uh, so, so yes, the, like on the BitBoy Crypto channel. On my Ben Armstrong Crypto X channel, uh, I still have my stake deal. It's not as much as it was. I'm not making a million dollars a month right now. I wish I was. Um, but the channel is much smaller. But we're still... You know, kind of like I talked about on the show yesterday. I mean, look, if, if people heard how much my steak deal is, they would probably be like, oh, wow, that's a lot of money. Oh, wow. Like, you know, it's 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 a decent amount. It's it's a bigger sponsorship than probably anybody else in crypto has. However, um, it's not a million dollars a month. And we have, you know, we just got hit with a $40,000 law, law bill. Um, we paid almost, I think it was adding up today. We've, we paid almost $200,000 in law bills. Um, in the last couple months, uh, last three or four months, however long it's been. And we're constantly, um, you know, we can't move forward uh, because every single week we're making this money and we're having to pay it out in payroll and pay it out in, um, in, in lawyers. Um, so, uh, you know, it's one of these things where hopefully over time, 
uh, we're going to get, we do have Femex as a big sponsor too. And that starts uh, this month. We start getting paid from them. So that's, that's a big, big help as well. It's a, it's a nice big sponsorship too. Not as big a stake, but um, you know, so yeah, so that's the deal. Uh, stake is with me. Stake was always going to come back and be my sponsor and stake is going to be our sponsor again. As soon as I give the big boy crypto channel back. Um, that's what's so, that's what's so funny about this whole thing is TJ's argument. Uh, Cause ever, like I fired him and then they threw over through me. Uh, TJ's argument for this fake uh, coup thing uh, is that uh, the business could not survive without me, or the, or the business could not survive with me. Excuse me. Uh, it that's what the the uh, clause in the operating agreement says that if I am not removed from the business, it will go to zero. I was like, no, actually, like the first day y'all fired me, fake fired me, you lost a fifteen million dollar contract which is 90% of the revenue for the business. Uh, cause I was all the revenue for the business. So we're, what are you going to do? Um, so anyways, Here, here's one thing that I, I feel like you may have screwed up a little bit was mm -hmm. when you took time off in this space. Yeah. It's like, dude, people look at you as a leader, right? Yeah. This space is filled with sheep as much as I, I hate to say it, and wish I could change it. This space is filled with sheep. Yeah. They, they, they follow us, right? Not yeah. even just you, Ben. They follow right. us, right? right? And the second you're not here for a week or a week in a few days, it's like, yo, daddy left. I found a new daddy and yeah. I hate my old daddy. You know, this guy yeah. buys me candy and, and takes me shopping. I'm going to stick to this daddy now. And, and I, that's how I feel like this space is. So a lot of people turned on you because you weren't there to really say all this stuff and answer to, to yeah. everybody on right. all this shit trying to cancel you. So that kind of fucked you, man. That's, well, that's how it, I saw it. Yeah. Well, you have to keep in mind that um, when this first happened, I mean, my God, I never dreamed it would take this long uh, to get everything back. We had two really shitty judges, is what it is. Uh, they made bad determinations in, the, in these stupid truck cases we had so far. In the uh, emergency hearing for return to the status quo, and then uh, the Lamborghini uh, hearing um, uh, for to, get, to arrest them for extortion, uh, which was a giant disaster. Uh, the judge was just lazy, and the judge was like, ah, this, this is just too much. Uh, I'm used to 15 minute cases. This is six hours. I just don't know. I don't know who the car is. I know who's the car. Uh, it was stupid. Um, and, and the fact is, um, is that at first when this started, we were going to file a lawsuit for this emergency hearing and we thought we were going to get everything back very quickly. So you, you have to keep in mind at this point, I think Carlos is trying to kill me. Um, I, I believe that they're trying to send me to prison. They, they were. They're trying to send me to prison for their theft. Uh, they were trying. Uh, Carlos was telling me he was going to kill me and all this stuff. Uh, and then they then they release. Um, uh, they release a. I'll tell you. So I will give you guys uh, some information right now that nobody knows, um, except for I guess one person, uh, which is when they released my affair. Um, Carlos created this fake account, and he went and he put out um, this this. Uh, he started messaging every single influencer that he could on Telegram and telling them about the crazy affair story that just dropped. Uh, Crypto Mason, uh, a lot of people know Mason, and I'm, 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 I haven't told Mason I'm going to say this out loud, but I have to because it's evidence for our court case and it's going to come out publicly very soon, uh, which is the night my affair was released, Justin Williams messaged every influencer and I have a screenshot. And this screenshot, uh, I'll go ahead. I'll, I'll share it to you guys right now, actually, if I can find it. Uh, the screenshot literally has Justin Williams lying four times in one screenshot. Uh, he says, he says he has no idea about any of this stuff. Uh, then he says, oh, I had no idea. I don't know who that is. I don't know who's on the other side of that phone call. It was Carlos, obviously. Justin and Carlos are best friends. He claimed he didn't know it was him. Uh, then he says, Mason says, Hey, who sent this to you? And he goes, I don't know, man. Somebody, I don't know. Just somebody sent it to me. It's crazy. Uh, and then Mason says something to the effect of, uh, you know, uh, are you sure you don't know who that is or something that of something like that, whatever it is, it's four bold face lies on one screenshot. It's actually impressive. It's hard to do to tell four lies that an influencer knows are lies in real time, uh, in the moment. And so, uh, this was all going on and, and I started getting so much fucking pressure on me, 
um, uh, from everybody I know, I was like, I, people were just getting too hurt. Uh, my wife was getting too hurt. My kids were getting too hurt. And I just decided I was going to tap out. Uh, but I never thought tapping out meant not having my company. Uh, I thought tapping out was, okay, I'll come back and be a slave, I guess, and I'll work and we'll, uh, you know, just make money for the company. Uh, I never realized that they were always trying to separate me because they stole. And, and once we get in the books, uh, it's obvious and, and they're going to all be in trouble. And they were trying to keep me out of the book. So the point is, is that the reason I took time off is because I was playing coy. Uh, I thought within a week I was going to be back on the channel. Um, and so what happens is when they release all this stuff, I tap out. I send them a message. I think it's in the, might be in our lawsuit. Uh, I send them a message. I say, I tap out. You guys win. Uh, let's figure this thing out, whatever. Um, and that was, that was, I guess, about two weeks into it. And it, it was like I had to drop the lawsuit. We were trying to file a lawsuit. And when I told them it was over, I had to drop it because I thought, you know, like it was a terrifying night. I really can't. Nobody can ever understand the hell that I was put through, um, except for Cassie, because she was there for the whole thing. Uh, we literally almost fled the country. Uh, we were so close to leaving the country. There were times where I was close to killing myself. There were times where I just didn't see a way out of this. Um, and, and the hell and the psychological prison that these people put me in, nobody can understand what that's like unless you've walked in that. If you've walked in that where you've been in a psychological prison by someone blackmailing or extorting you or holding something over your head, um, you know, it's a terrifying situation because they're living in ambiguity. Uh, they're saying things that you don't know the answers to, and they're alluding to, they know the answers to these questions and you're in trouble for it. And it's this thing where the people are always trying to make you feel like you did something wrong. And that's how they extort you. Uh, and that's how they get you vulnerable enough to do stuff like this. So, um, I, I understand that I did take some time off, but it was really intentional because I thought I was going to be back on the other channel. Um, and certainly I'm taking today off, uh, and we're going to have some videos coming up soon. Uh, but you know, I, I think that, I don't think that necessarily hurt me. Uh, because if you look at the numbers, uh, I mean, my numbers have outperformed the discover crypto numbers from day one, from literally day one on my channel, I've crushed them in numbers all the way around. Uh, and if you look at the number of subscribers that they've lost, uh, they have lost, uh, I'm going to go back and look at the exact number. Uh, I think they've lost 73,000 subscribers and I've gained 93,000, um, or 92, whatever it is, 92 or 93. So I've lost, or I've gained you all You've gained those 93,000 yeah. on YouTube faster than I've ever seen anyone in the <laughs> crypto space or anything even, yeah. even non-crypto related. I don't Thank think you, I've seen someone that quickly do it. Yeah. I know Bark and I talked about it. Bark was super <laughs> impressed by that too. Thank you. Amazing, well, I'm excited. Bro. I'm excited to hit 100K again and get my plaque because you, uh, everybody knows TJ stole my gold and my silver plaque uh, from my channel. So, no, I know you take pride in them too. Yeah. And I, again, yeah. dude, I, I don't look at you as an influencer, dude. I look at you as a freaking pioneer in this space. You, Thank you. You've done a lot for me. You've you taught me a lot for years. You've taught a lot of other people a lot. And not just taught us, man, but you onboarded so many people, so many beginners to this space, man. People don't seem to remember this or yeah. or see this like like we have at least so i definitely got to give the credit where it's due and bit boy bro you're you're super important to this uh to this space i know you've got a lot of fans here screw all the noise all these other people they just they want to see you fail man that little steak sponsored by steak plaque on your uh on your <laughs> videos and tweets in the past Dude, that, that chapped a lot of asses, man. A lot yeah. of people wish they could be sponsored by Steak. Yeah. I mean, think yeah. about it. It's you in the crypto space, and outside of you, it's it's Drake. It's yeah. Aiden Ross. It's it's superstars. Uh -huh. So, dude, well, you've, uh, you've done nothing but crush it, man. We were talking about this last night. Uh, somebody reached out to me and asked me about, uh, you know, we've had several people ask us about Steak sponsorships. And, uh, you know, we, for a while, uh, you know, the first four or five people that asked us, uh, we went to stake and we said, Hey, uh, what about these people? Uh, these are some cool crypto people. Now we wanted to move, we got far enough in our deal where we felt secure with our numbers before we started, you know, trying to say, Hey, check somebody else out. You don't want to bring on another sponsor and they outperform you and then you lose your sponsorship. Uh, but, but basically stake told us. Stake, Stake isn't interested in anybody else in crypto. Uh, they're not interested in anybody else in crypto. Uh, that's what's so funny about, um, that's what's so funny about, um, uh, wait, didn't, 
Did did one other person to Gaines get signed? No, he got signed by Roll Bed. That's what it was. I thought but maybe they put one person on Twitter. I can't remember, but I don't think they did. Uh, but the fact is, is that that's what's so funny about Discover Crypto thinking, uh, which Discover Crypto won't even be a thing for much longer, but uh, thinking that they were going to get to keep the stake contract. Uh, stake, stake, stake loves Ben Armstrong. Uh, stake liked BitBoy Crypto because I am BitBoy. Uh, they, they weren't interested in anybody else. And there are a lot of jealous people out there about that. And we've actually, done, like I said, we've, we've tried because I thought it would be good for stake to get a little further into crypto and, and you know, have some of the bigger influencers um, that are positive. Um, you know, uh, it's a crypto social casino. Uh, the the stake.com, uh, you know, you have stake.us in the United States, you have stake.com in the, in, for the international. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, stake.com has crypto. Uh, you can actually gamble or, or play the games or whatever with crypto. Uh, and so because, because of that, you would think that they will want to get way more involved in the crypto space, but they've got enough coverage from the mainstream. They don't really need it. The only, the only brand they want to be associated with was mine. And we have a really close relationship. Just, just to give you, this is what's so funny about DJ trying to say that we embezzled money to Cassie from stake and all this stuff. Uh, you know, I, I told stake, uh, there's three people that we have that are contacts at stake, uh, the founder, Eddie, um, and then we have two other, um, high level people over there. I'm not going to say their names because I just don't know if they want their name said, uh, but we have a group text and we've had a group text for ever since we started this deal. Um, and like, if you would have seen the stuff they, they were saying to Cassie about her father passing away and how sorry they were, uh, like the stake people are like family to us. Um, they really are. And, uh, you know, I got, I got a really exciting stake thing I'm going to be doing, uh, I think actually this weekend, uh, that's going to be really cool, uh, that you guys probably won't know about for a little bit. Um, but yeah, we are, st stake is, stake is so important to me. It, it's hard for me to wrap into words what they mean to me because if, if it wasn't for them sponsoring my channel right now, I, I wouldn't be able to do what I do, period. I'm not just a live show. Um, stake standing behind, behind me and Cassie is the strongest vote of confidence that anybody has given us during this entire thing. And they were always going to give us a deal back. They just wanted to make sure for a couple months that I could do it on my own because I, I had 60 people before and then they saw I could put out the same amount of content. So, um, I, I, uh, you know, stake is, stake is more than just a sponsor to me. And that's why I'm so proud to have them and so happy to have them. Hey bro, that is, uh, that is amazing, man. And not to change the subject or anything, bro, but just in case you're pressed for time, dude, I saw I saw that Dojinal Dogs video, oh, yeah. and I know you, dude. Shout out to uh, shout out to Leah. Leah's been spending a lot of time with us, man. Yeah. She is um, amazing, cool. dude. Yeah. She is amazing. She is that is an asset at your uh -huh. company. That is an asset to this space. Huge, huge shout out to Leah. I really want to know what what attract besides Leo. What attracted you to this collection? Because just based yeah. off the passion in your voice, bro. And <laughs> again, guys, this is not no undisclosed promo. None of that nonsense, no. guys. Yeah. None of that nonsense. Ben, no, no, we, no, has no, we a, came to you. Yeah, we came to you about it. That is that is a fact, yo. Ben has Leah. She's in our spaces every day. She works with Ben and. She's been bullish on us. She talked to Ben about it. Ben got bullish on it. Uh, me and Ben do have a, uh, a relationship. I do consider yeah. him a friend in this space. Absolutely. He reached out to me like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. I explained it to him and, and not even much. Leah did. Leah really did all the yeah. explaining. And this guy made an amazing video. I think twice he, he shouted out uh, Doge Ordinals in the first one and then Dogeinal Dogs in the second. So I want to I wanna know more about that, man. And I want to have Bark tell you some things as well. Yeah, well, you know, the thing is, is I've learned over time uh, to lean on what people know. And Leah is somebody that's amazing. So uh, let me give you just a little bit of background on Leah. Um, Leah was a person who watched my channel. She was a fan, uh, just like AJ. A lot of people know AJ writes for me, John Vibes as well. They were all fans. They watched the channel and got an opportunity to, um, you know, put an application for a writer. And we hired Leah. And Leah was a writer for me at the old channel. And I'll be honest with you. Like I met Leah in Toronto. Uh, she's very nice. She gave me a turn of Blue Jays hat, if I remember correctly. Um, and you know, like Leah, she was a great person. Uh, but you know, she had a writing, but her, I, I didn't know the scripts that she wrote compared to the scripts that other people wrote. 
Um, I knew the ones that AJ and John Vibes wrote, uh, but Leah's didn't have like a specific where I was like, oh, this is definitely a Leah script. And so Leah was not someone who was like super high on my list when I was at the last company. Um, not that she wasn't a good employee or a good writer. It's just like, oh, oh, Leah, she's writing for us. Cool. Uh, but something hey, really you remember cool the happened. Blue Jays hat? You remember the Blue Jays hat? Yeah, I so did. Good. I did. <laughs> uh, Leah, uh, Leah's here holding me accountable. I didn't even know that. Um, but, yeah, but, so but the fact is, to the whole space. Uh, well, I knew you were listening. I didn't know if you were speaking. Uh, but the thing is, is that uh, she came to me uh, after everything happened. Uh, Leah was extremely loyal to me. Um, Leah and John Vibes both. Everybody that works for me now are all the loyal and talented people that were from the old company. And Leah came to me and she had this idea for this sub stack. And, uh, you know, Leah had been working on our sub stack or our, our, uh, what would you call it? Newsletter that we had at the old channel. So I knew she was good at that. And I had somebody else in charge of it that did a good job. Uh, but Leah came to me and said, Hey, we should do this on the new channel. And she had all these ideas. And I was like, okay, sounds good. Like, I like it. I want to do a newsletter. Let's take the ideas that we talk about on the channel and show people how to actually make money throughout the week with those same ideas in the newsletter. And it was a really cool idea. And through doing this newsletter, uh, Leah has crushed it. Like Leah has found so many incredible projects. And John Vibes both. They both have. I think, I think John Vibes found a, a Trump coin. It wasn't the, it was a Trump meme coin. I don't think it was Trump. It was a different one. Uh, and I think that one 14 X, you know? And then of course, uh, you know, uh, you know, one of these NFTs like seven X, uh, from just where she saw it at, not even the, you know, I think they were airdropped, whatever. But, uh, the point is, is that through all this disaster in my company, uh, Leah has been a person who has gotten a huge advantage from it because finally I see her, uh, finally I see her and finally I see how great of an asset that she is. And I see why, uh, Nick Damati tried to hide her from me. Uh, Nick Damati tried to hide a lot of talented people from me because they were trying to keep them for themselves when they were going to overthrow me. Uh, so um, she came to me and she said, hey, uh, you know, they've got these Doge ordinals now. And of course, the idea immediately made sense. Like, yeah, of course, of course they would do ordinals on Doge. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, and then showed me the art and then said the books was involved. And I was like, okay, uh, sounds good. And then a couple of days later, she was like, Oh God, the thing is like three X already. I was like, okay, cool. So I got real interested. I uh, started looking into it and, uh, you know, you're right. It did kind of have the same kind of the equivalent of like, uh, you know, taproot wizards on Dogecoin kind of had that same feel to it. So, um, look, you're looking at these, uh, these chains that have these meme coins launching on them and NFTs and all, all these things. And a lot of chains are starting to get a lot of use now. And some of my be my very best projects I uh, picked for the year so far is Murrow. It's down now, uh, but it was up, I think, sixteen hundred percent just in the last, uh, you know, last two months or something like that. Is that it, like I said, it has pulled back uh, quite a bit, uh, but it's a meme coin on Solana. Uh, a lot of people know there's a ton of meme coins on other projects, and you just start seeing value in these communities when you have a chain. It's got a good community and something gets put out and there's not an oversaturation, right? Because what, what happened with uh, BNB it, back in 2020 and Levi summer is all of a sudden there was an oversaturation of BNB projects uh, where there were just too many. You couldn't really make money anymore by the end of it because uh, you need a consolidation of people putting money into a project to get to pump, not a thousand people investing into a thousand projects you need a thousand people investing in one project to really make it move or whatever, you know, whatever the numbers are. And so, uh, you know, I saw this as once it, if Leah picked it, I already knew it was going to be good. And then when books was involved, uh, you guys, I'm big fans of you guys. I love you guys. Um, <laughs> it's, it's been hard to find people that have been loyal to me and not said bad stuff about me, uh, you know, through all the stuff I've been through. And I appreciate you guys always, you know, always welcoming me on the show and stuff like that. Um, so it just was a, it was a good combination and, um, you know, got a hold of a couple of them and, um, I know Leah's got some and I, I know our audience got some, uh, because Leah was telling everybody in our subject to buy them. Well, I got mine after I researched it. I was like, oh shoot, I should grab a couple of these. And like, remember, sorry, I don't even mean to like chime in, but tell I them the truth. Of... Tell them the truth. You came in, you fell in love with us. That's it. I did. I <laughs> you did. You didn't yeah. research. <laughs> Well, you didn't research first. You didn't research first. 
You researched oh, us, no. you loved us. It was family <laughs> and love at first sight. That's true. That is definitely true. I've like been having so much fun chatting with you guys. But like the truth is, is like that's my whole job is doing research. And I was like, shoot, like this is serious. Like this is gonna happen. I'm definitely buying these. But yeah, like you guys had the same energy as Ben, which is just like, can you ask this person a question and will they give you a truthful answer? And like Ben, you remember like when I was with the old company, I just said straight up like, okay, guys, like what did Ben do? Yeah. You know, and no one, no one would get, no one would give me the real answer. And it's like, you can't, I'm sorry, but you can't get involved in someone else's marriage. That's not for you to judge. So what should I, you know, like, because of course, you know, anything that's like, extremely bad you should obviously stay away from but just going into like going into somebody's marriage and saying like okay this is like I'm allowed to judge this person on this it's like no you're not like sorry if that's what this is going to be based on then I'm out you know and they just they couldn't give me a straight answer but anyway these guys like Bark Book Shibo any of these people on this space will give you a straight answer about anything so, and so will Ben. Yeah. And uh, Ben, ben you know, biggest too many answers. Yeah. Ben will tell you anything that you want to hear, but I mean, that's an honest person. That's, that's yeah. a real person. Yo, oh, you. Leah, you're, you're, you're amazing. One uh, thing you said, one thing you said wrong is I don't think anyone can match that guy. Ben's energy. Yo. <laughs> uh, really? That guy's energy that it's on a, thousand trillion miles an hour and yeah. he's older than me and he's got more energy than me and bark put together so i don't think you can match that energy but man, yeah you guys okay. are that's, you guys are that's great fair and another person who's cool is cassie i've chatted Thank with you. her a few times but like i'm like no no this is a this is a n- very nice person you know not that i don't think anybody would say anything necessarily negative about her but just to just to clear the record, just yeah. as somebody who can say, you know what, I've just had like several normal conversations with this person and I, I like her as a person. I also like Bethany. I met her too. But yeah. that's not the point. That's not that's not for anyone else. And especially when you're working for a company, you do not get in the CEO's business. Yeah. Uh, like, I'm sorry, but I'm like, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you've worked before, but where how I grew up, you do not do that. You know what I mean? Like that is, that is not your world. That is not your business. Yeah. Well, it was, it was made their business so they could overthrow me. I uh, could have been anything. Uh, it just so happened. It was anything them. to cancel yeah. you, bro. It yeah. was whatever, you know, we're going to trick web three with wanting to yeah. cancel this guy. Dude, the people that come at you, I, I hate saying this, but it's a fact. Oh, yeah. The people that have a problem with your personal life, I, I guarantee you have domestic violence charges under their belt, are fucking pedophiles, are all the weirdest, worst types of people in the world that always want to try to cancel others for yeah. whatever reason. They'll go as far as making things up if they can't find things uh, to cancel people with. What happens with some, if, if you're not abusing children, if you're not a pedophile, right. I don't care what you do at home. Every I've broken up with girls, I've cheated on girls, I've done drugs, like, and so has everyone else. Like, it's it's really fucked up to sit here and try canceling people off of something that it's okay for your best friend to do it, but you know, the second we got the chance, when Ben does something wrong in our eyes, let's try to cancel him. Like, that's the well, shit yeah, that drives me nuts, dude. There's there's a little more to it than that because. A lot of the stuff they said were absolute lies. I didn't relapse. And um, now, this is all so ridiculous. Um, I don't really want to get into this. But uh, you guys know I I put out this poll on Twitter uh, asking whether people think I do cocaine or not. Uh, And the reason why I put that poll out is because I don't do cocaine. Uh, I have done cocaine in my life uh, back before 2007 when I went to rehab. Uh, Probably my last day when I overdosed, I was doing some cocaine. Uh, that's 2007. Uh, that is now what 17 years ago. And the fact is, is TJ comes out and the first day of all this puts out this post that I relapsed on my own Twitter account on BitBoy Crypto Twitter account that I relapsed. 
guys, I was taking some diet pills I had a prescription for. Uh, that's the entire fucking thing. Uh, and and uh, here's what's so interesting. I want, I want everybody to think about this. I want everybody to think about this. Um, everybody says that I relapsed and I'm doing drugs and that's why this happened, which is so stupid. Um, go find, go find the Twitter post, go find the tweet where TJ put out that I relapsed. Go find it. Uh, good luck. They fucking deleted it because it's a lie. They had to delete it for defamation because they know it's 100% a lie. I, we literally have, we literally have audio a phone call of Carlos and Cassie with Carlos telling Cassie, we know he's not on hard drugs. This is just for the redemption story. We're going to make so much money on this. We literally have that on audio. Uh, and so uh, have I done drugs in my life? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I had to go to rehab. I overdosed. Um, have I been sober uh, ever since? Yeah. I live. People who are around me know. Uh, I, nobody has ever seen me fucking touch a drop of alcohol, uh, for sure. Actually, no, that's not true. Uh, one person, uh, crypto Beatles back in 2019 or 2018 in Chicago, uh, asked him for a rock star from the bar and he accidentally gave me one that had vodka in it. Uh, I took two sips of that thing and threw it away. Uh, but I digress. Uh, he was so apologetic about that. Uh, but the fact is, is that I have not relapsed. Um, and that is th the fact that they use that soft underbelly. Anyone who is, I, I want, look, I want you guys to all really think about that. I, I would venture to say that out of your audience, there is probably at least 25% of your audience um, has done hard drugs or maybe got a little crazy or, uh, you know, maybe had to do a little stint in a rehab or, or definitely know somebody who has. Uh, if you say that, then it's 100%. I want you guys to really think about this. If you were really trying to be sober, uh, you went through rehab, and you did it. You became sober, and then you got out, and everybody started accusing you of doing of using drugs because your business partner made it up to get you out of the business to steal from you. I want you to think about that. Think, think about what that would do to a person that's in recovery. I've been in recovery long enough. It don't do nothing to me. Um, but think about that. How disgusting disgusting of a person do you have to be to make up someone who's been sober for 17 years to make up that they relapsed so you could publicly humiliate them because you guys see you guys everybody sees the plan now everybody sees that that first two days or first week it was a non-stop onslaught of public humiliation on me Every day it was new public humiliation from them because they thought that was going to make me tap out. Um, but they didn't. Uh, they, they wanted to break me and Cassie up. That's what they were trying to do the entire time. They knew if they broke me and Cassie up that they could win. They could separate me from Cassie because Cassie's the smartest woman I've ever been around times 100. Uh, sorry, Leah. You're very smart too. Uh, but Cassie is very, very, very intelligent. And she is very strategic. And she has a law background. And she's their worst nightmare. Um, and I think the mistake that they made is they thought they could bully me, uh, to get rid of her, uh, not knowing that, uh, I would die before I would get rid of Cassie. Uh, this is my, this is my woman for the rest of my life, uh, for a hundred thousand percent. There's zero percent of me, uh, that thinks that we're not going to be married until the day that we die, uh, probably together. Uh, and not in a murder suicide, uh, but, <laughs> or a double, I meant to say double suicide, definitely not a murder suicide. Um, uh, but <laughs> I only said that cause I said together, I don't know, maybe a car accident, uh, maybe old age, maybe we'll be, maybe we'll be in the nursing home holding hands. Uh, you guys will be in the out. next notebook movie. Next notebook yeah, that's movie. That's right. That's right. The, the crypto, crypto book, the bit book. Yeah. 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 Uh, the, the private seed journal, uh, that's what we'll call it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bro, dude, you're you know what you know what it is with you two i gotta i gotta say that like it's what's it's not it's like motivating the word's just not hitting me like you know watching someone like you deal with what you deal with bro is so motivating like thank you bro it, it encourages me to be better to to want to work hard like, bro books it's, we were it's in crazy, estonia bro. this motherfucker got hit by a train and still showed up and delivered a keynote with that energy 
But, but funny story, uh, Cassie was on the back of the scooter when we got hit on the train. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying. And yeah. I can attest, I had dinner with this guy. He didn't even touch the bread. So <laughs> him to touch drugs uh, is far-fetched. Yeah, not a chance. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, look it's like AJ. AJ said, AJ was like, I literally was with him every day for months when we were doing our book tour. It was like, we went to clubs all the time. He's like, you never drank, you never smoked, you never did anything. I'm like, yeah, obviously. Like, I, I think, I think that one of the things here is, is obviously for, for whatever reason, I have reputational problems that people don't believe me. I, I get it. Uh, but the funny thing here is, is that if people, I, I just wish that there was some way that I could osmosis, uh, like, take uh take this information and put it in a book and then slap all of you over the head with it and put this information in your head like if you guys really knew and really understood how many lies have come from these people and that everything that i'm telling you guys is 100 percent accurate and 100 percent true people would look at this totally different but it's so unbelievable and here's here's why what is more likely is it more likely that a former drug addict that everybody knows had a terrible, massive drug overdose and a terrible past? Because I've talked about it publicly so many times. It was such a big, important moment in my life in 2007. Um, this person uh, that's gone through all of this, um, that they've relapsed now. I lost my train of thought. Where were they going? Hold on. I lost my train of thought. Uh, What's more what likely? Saying? What's oh, more right, likely? Right, right. What's what's more likely? You've got this drug addict who relapses and is an asshole at his company, and his boss fires him, or not his boss, but his business partner fires him because he's toxic, right? He's a drug addict. He's having an affair, obviously. Uh, what's more likely that that person is lying, or that the calm, cool, collected, always calm, never showing any nervousness or fear, always coming out and giving some logical, reasonable explanation for whatever I said recently, what's more, what is more likely that the drug addict is being honest and he really didn't relapse or that the business partner ran a conspiracy involving about 20 people to overthrow me for my own fucking company so he can steal millions of dollars. Which one is more likely? It's so obviously much more likely did I relapse and I'm a drug addict? I'm lying about the whole thing. Like that should be obvious. And that's what they were relying on. That's what they were relying on is it should seem much more obvious that that would be the answer. And that's why people have a really hard time, uh, believing me about all this stuff because it seems so unbelievable. I get it. I know it does. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I hope that at some point I'm going to be completely vindicated of all this. Um, and I, I really, I feel like um, that right now I'm going through a big transition in my reputation because what's happening right now is really interesting because I'm repairing my reputation on the project side uh, because I'm picking a lot of good winners. I'm not doing any shills, zero sponsored videos. Uh, I'm not, I wish I was, and I don't have enough money to be invested in all my picks for the year. I wish I did. Um, but these are genuine picks that I really honestly researched and feel are going to be great assets for people for this year. I did a bunch of those videos this month. Uh, people are going to see I'm not in these pump and dump allocation circles with Ram and Kyle Chasse and all these guys. Uh, not any part of that. And I think my reputation is actually going to pretty much get completely repaired uh, from the stuff that actually happened, uh, which was in 2020 me covering three or four sponsor projects that rug pulled. Um, that, that is the crux of my sins in crypto, uh, that I didn't know that these projects were going to rug pull and I accepted money from them. Some of the money I gave back, some I gave to my audience. Um, some that happened much later. I mean, the money was whatever. Uh, we're not talking a huge amount of money. These were not, by the way, these were not 40 or $50,000 sponsorships that people will see on my media sheet much later. Uh, these were like $6,000 videos. Just so everybody's clear. Uh, these are not, I didn't make hundreds of thousands of dollars on these videos or anything back then in 2020. Um, and, and I feel like now the, the crypto, the, the, the crypto user has cycled through enough to where like basically the only people that bring up stuff from 2020 are just low IQ troglodytes that all they can say is the Zach XBT post, the Zach XBT post, uh, see, 
not having the critical thinking skills to actually go read it or think about it at all uh, or reason with it. Uh, but now what's so funny is I feel like my reputation is like a scammer or something is kind of, kind of changing is going away. Now I'm just an asshole. <laughs> now, now everybody hates me because I cheated on my wife. Everybody hates on me because, uh, you know, I got arrested at Carla's house. Uh, everybody hates me because Ben coins down. Uh, everybody hates me for different reasons now. Uh, and I actually see a lot of hope in that, uh, because eventually people are going to see what these people did to me. I'm going to be vindicated. Uh, ben coin is going to go to the moon at some point. Um, I believe that. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. I still don't know what I'm allowed to say. Uh, I do believe that I'm going to put the work and the dedication in to make it an extremely successful project. And I'd love to come back on and talk about Ben coin, uh, in probably about two or three months. Um, we've got a, our onboarding platform that we're putting together after that's done. We'd love to, to show that off to people. But, uh, you know, people now, they hate me for different reasons. They hate, what's so funny is now people just hate me for personal reasons, it seems like. Because uh, I'm a cokehead, they think. <clears throat> and I love how there's one picture uh, that Cassie and I took on Halloween uh, where people have zoomed in and they claim that there's cocaine in my nose. Uh, that's extremely stupid guys. Uh, you can look at that picture. You guys know, uh, the nose hair inside of my nose, like on my face is mostly white. Uh, and there's no powder in that video. And that, it, basically if, if you take anyone's nose and you zoom up that far under their nostril, it's going to be grainy enough that you can make yourself think there's anything in there. Um, but anyways, uh, so, so yeah. Dude, it sucks that you have to explain this. I, again, I've wow. been in this space long enough where there's so many times yeah. a, a project founder got out of rugging because everyone was sympathizing. These same people trying yeah. to cancel you uh -huh. were sympathizing that it, the person's a drug addict. Simp oh, you know, he's a drug addict. He was doing ketamine or whatever. Yeah. We, we need to give this guy a chance. He's the best. Uh, again, it's that bias in this space that's so gross, man. It's that cancel culture where if they see you as some sort of threat, if you're you don't have their bags as your your intention to pump. Yeah. Oh, I I already sold Ben Coin. Let me go shit on this fucking guy. Yeah. That's that's really the mentality of this space that we have to change if we want to onboard and we want all this greatness in this space in the future. We got to change that, man. And and yeah. it's so hard because bagatitis is bagatitis is the realest thing here. Everything is about bags and who's pumping my bags and who's doing this and who's doing that for me, not uh, not for other people because I'm so selfish. So it's it's something that I don't think will ever change. But if we educate people properly, dude, we we could help minimize it. That's how I yeah. look at it in this. Yeah, space, no, no, no that, really that's it, one hundred percent. That's it, one hundred percent. It's about the education, and it's about people not getting hurt, and it's about these influencers stop showing. Look, can, can we? Okay, Rand is a piece of shit for sure. Um, he is. I, I I think Rand is probably the worst actor in the entire space that's an influencer. Uh, Kyle Chasse is right there with him, um, and you certainly have a few other ones um, that I can think of that I won't name. But the fact is, is that um, you know uh, these guys uh, that that Rand and these pump and dumpers uh, they do it nonstop. This is what hurts people in our industry. And we have the power to stop this. It's so obvious when Rand talks about these projects he's showing. Like, it's so unbelievably obvious. I can watch his show any day of the week, which I would never watch his show because it's garbage. Uh, but I can watch his show any day of the week, and every single coin that he mentions that he's invested in, I'll know for sure immediately. It's so easy because the way that they talk about it, because every time they bring up one of these uh, allocation projects, it's always said in the same way. It's always like, well, guys, uh, you know, I don't know about this one, uh, but this project, oh, it's got a nice, nice technology to it. Uh, nice technology. It's got a great team. It's got a great team. And, uh, uh, man, I don't know. Uh, maybe it could go to the moon. It might be good for you to uh, maybe a good investment for you. Uh, he says the same shit every time about every coin that he shills. Um, and the people have got to start the fact that crypto banner has any audience at all is pathetic. Uh, the, do you want to know why one thing they do? 
uh, is they bring people in uh, with their affiliate link, uh, and they've got an entire banter academy. Uh, their banter academy, the entire thing is designed uh, to get affiliate sign up for leverage trading links for them. Um, they don't do anything that's an advantage to their audience that does not immediately make them money. They don't do anything. Every show they do is about shilling that academy, about shilling those leverage links. Uh, or those le And look, I'm not opposed to shilling leverage trading site links. I do it. Uh, Femex, uh, sign up, QR code on the screen. Uh, like, I've got no problem with that. But it's, it's when you look at the way that he uses his audience and he dumps... Th to me, that is the entire thing. Are you dumping on your audience while you're telling them to buy things? Um, and look, certainly there's a distinction between a leverage trade. Uh, certainly I could be telling people to buy XRP. Uh, and at that time I have a short on XRP. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that because that's just market conditions. Uh, I can have a short and believe it's going to get hit a level and bounce back and be telling people we're down accumulation zones. That's congruent. That's okay. Uh, but you shouldn't. And look, I, I think it's totally fine. Uh, maybe I'm wrong on this. Uh, I think it's totally fine for me to come out and make a video on XRP saying how unbelievably great I feel XRP is. And it's the number one coin of this bull run. I do believe that even though it doesn't feel like it right now, I could say that. And then I can go sell $10,000 with XRP in the uh, right after that. Uh, guys, I'm never going to affect the XRP price ever. Uh, the market cap is way too big for any influencer to be able to affect the price of XRP. Now, if every influencer was talking about it, that'd be one thing. Um, but it, what we're really talking about here is we are really talking about coins you haven't heard of, guys. Uh, if you discovered the coin through crypto banter, then you can pretty much guarantee it's a scam. If that's how you found it, because they're only debuting coins over there that they're invested in. Uh, they don't care what these coins do. Um, and I thought it was so funny, man, this Stan crypto guy, I, I hope I have him on for an interview. He called ran out so hard. Ran literally, literally in this video, he says, well, uh, what you have to understand is uh, we only made a tiny investment into Satoshi VM, a tiny investment, a $3,000 investment. Uh, that's all we made. Uh, so because we only made a $3,000 investment, uh, 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 we didn't feel like we need to do the deep hours of research on the project. Uh, so, so we would do the deep hours of research on the project. We only put three thousand dollars in. Uh, so you know we're not really accountable for this. Shut the fuck up, you bitch. Uh, Rand is such a motherfucker. The fact that that guy says that we only put three thousand dollars into this coin, so we did no research. But by the way, this is not just an investment. This is something we're shilling to our audience to go in and buy and pump it to the moon for me so I can sell the rest of it. Uh, it's absolutely disgusting uh, what he does. He literally said, because, no, okay, let me, let, me, let me bring you guys in. Let me bring you guys into the private sale investment world. Um, we had private sale investments back in 2021. Uh, many of them, uh, we turned $10,000 into millions. Uh, one of them, we turned $10,000 into 3.2 million in three months. Uh, one time, uh, we turned $10,000 into 500K in a month. Okay. Guys, these small, this $3,000 number that he's giving you, it's BS. That's all we get. When, when, when guys, good projects or, or, or projects that are going to pump, they don't just give the tokens out to everybody. Guys, when I was at the peak, it was hard to get a $10,000 investment. They would only want to get five. Five is like, legit, you get five, you're going to make six figures on that every single time. That is the influencer pump and dump ball. That's it. Every one of these coins are going to go up massively on the launch. On the launch. Guys, who? I, I don't understand. I, I got to be really honest with you. Hold on. Uh, Cassie, the queen is here. Yes, Cassie. I'll be in just, I'll, I'll go in five minutes. I love you. Okay. Uh, so uh, the fact is, is that um, the, the small amounts of money these influencers put in, uh, this $3,000 investment he put in, that's average. That's about what you put in on these allocations. He 
try, it's so disingenuous and dishonest of him to try to make it sound like, well, this is just a tiny investment for us. What these companies do, okay, what these projects do, Kyle Chasse runs tons of them. He's such a piece of shit, just like the rest of them. Uh, but what these people do, okay, is they come out and they create these projects and they say, okay, we've got $100,000 worth of allocations to hand out. We want to take that amount of money and we want to split that into the smallest individual amounts that we can per influencer to impact how many influencers we get in to bump these projects. And then when they do it, they all work together, all 250 of them. You saw it's Toshi VM. Uh, they all work together and they all shill it and they're all shielded and they're all dumping and it's bullshit. And I want people to know I am so unbelievably tired of the BS and the scams and this type of bullshit in our space. And I'm coming for these people. I'm, I'm done with it. I'm coming for Rand. I'm going to have a video about him tomorrow. Uh, I'm coming for these people. I'm not going to let up. I'm going to be like a bulldog, uh, you know, chomping down on a bone uh, because I'm not going to let go of Rand until he's completely out of this industry. Uh, we need, people need to protest. I can't believe people still watch his show. After all of this has came out, He's been involved in this multiple times, okay? And unlike me, uh, you can't point back at a date and say, oh, look, he started doing things differently. I never did anything malicious like him. I don't want to draw myself in that comparison. Um, but the fact is, is that we've got to stand up to these people. No retail person, no retail person makes money on these projects they show. None of them. Uh, you know what you make money on? Like Solana, projects that people find that are really good. You know what you don't make money on? these private sale allocations that they lie about to you nonstop. Uh, and it's disgusting and we need to stop it. So uh, as you guys heard, uh, uh, for the first time in my life, uh, I'm in a relationship where I don't know if I wear the pants. So I need to go inside or I'm in trouble. Uh, so I'm just kidding. I do still wear the pants. That was a joke. Benjamin? <laughs> yeah. Yo, these, these guys, these projects, they're, they're in my DMs, they're in Bark's DMs, they're in all our DMs. Yeah, all absolutely. the influencers in this space, they're giving you between 1% and 5% of yep. the supply. So you go and chill and dump. Yeah. Just think about that. I, that's, I don't accept that. I don't accept anyone that's giving me a piece of their supply. Just like Ben said, he doesn't accept it. But no. do we have these offers all day long? Absolutely. Uh, to yeah. me, it's a turnoff when a company doesn't have money for marketing or influencers. Yeah. It really is a turnoff. So they're just encouraging people to dump. It's going to be yeah. a pump and dump based off of their, their marketing budget, which is the supply of the token. So... Again, guys, I would stay away from any influencers doing anything like that. And it's you guys have to you have to be you have to really be creative with your thinking. It's yeah. all in your face. It's all in your face. And when me and Ben call it out, when Bart calls it out, we look we're made to look like we're crazies. Yep. We're not crazy, guys. You just have to seriously think outside the box, listen to these people, and you could piece everything together yourself. They're all doing yeah. it. Well, and you, you, you know, you just don't know who you can trust in these situations. And, and a lot of these influencers are doing it. And, you know, it's one of these things where, you know, I get it. We're all saying we're not doing this stuff. And we're also saying everyone else is doing it. Right. Uh, so it's a little hard for the audience to try to figure out who's being genuine uh, and who's not. And, and I would tell people, if you listen to over time, if you listen over time, the clue to look for. Uh, is people are consistent, <laughs> like find people that are consistent with what they tell you. Uh, that does not mean, that does not mean you can't have new opinions. I change my opinion on things a lot, uh, but I'm very consistent in the story I tell about the things that I think are important in crypto and the projects that I like, there's similar threads between them. Uh, I'm not going to all of a sudden, um, come out like here, here's a great, for instance, okay. If tomorrow I came out on my channel and I said, guys, uh, I have got, this new algorithmic stable coin. It's incredible. It's going to be just like Luna. You're going to make so much money from it. It's unbelievable. Uh, that would be insane. Uh, why? Because I don't like algorithmic stable coins. I've all, I did one sponsored, uh, benchmark was a project I, that I was sponsored by, uh, back in 2021 or 2020. Um, and I had a lot of high hopes for it. Uh, it's the only algorithmic stable coin I ever invested in besides Ampleforth. 
and did terrible. <laughs> and Ampleford did terrible too. Uh, all the alg- algorithmic stable coins, uh, you can certainly say that uh, UST uh, did terrible <laughs> when it went down uh, in Terra Luna, but uh, in Anchor. But the fact is, is that, uh, guys, I don't like those kinds of coins. So if all of a sudden one day I come on my channel and I start shilling an algorithmic stable coin when you've heard me say I don't like them, that's inconsistent, right? Now, when I started talking about meme coins back in April, I came out and I did a big video explaining why it was meme coin season and it was time for us to look at those during the season. And now we've seen, like in the Solana ecosystem, there is still value in some of these meme coins. Whereas before, my message was meme coins have no value. Uh, therefore, I don't want to be involved in them. Suddenly, then I started realizing, I, I saw things changed where the meme coin people are not the same people as the crypto people. There's an overlap, but they're not the same. And I saw a new audience I could kind of go after. And I gave my reasoning for changing my opinion on a niche. I didn't come out all of a sudden one day. I was like, hey, here's a random meme coin. Everybody go buy this. Uh, look for people that are consistent. And, and people that can defend their arguments well, and when they're put on the spot, they know how to answer. Because that's called honesty. <laughs> when people are put on the spot and they're honest, they can always give an answer. When people are put on the spot and they can't give an answer, they're always lying every single time. Uh, so, But anyways, guys, I, I've got to run. I appreciate you guys having me on. It's been phenomenal. We'll have to do it again, um, you know, uh, maybe a couple months or whatever. And I appreciate you guys always supporting me. And I support everything you guys are doing with your uh, Doge Nulls and uh, the Doge Ordinals and the whole nine yards. Uh, so I, I definitely think that if people look at the Bitcoin ecosystem blowing up, you know, who knows? I don't think the Dogecoin ecosystem is going to blow up like the Bitcoin ecosystem. But uh, certainly there is some upside and some potential there. And there's certainly some upside and potential in being early in some of the first projects that are going on there. So um, like I said, appreciate you guys having me on. And, uh, you know, I'll talk to you guys later.